6020W whistle tender. Somebody gave it to me. Okay, problem number one. What I like to do in order to get the uh, relay out, just simply remove the screw so that it moves back and forth. And um, the other thing I wanted to do was to work on the truck. So I removed the uh, horseshoe washer that was in there. You see that the, the truck is still there. The first thing I like to do is to clean up the contacts very quickly with uh, 100 grit wet dry paper. I'm going to check out the brushes. I'm going to check out the springs just to make sure everything's good. What I've done is I've removed the wire and the nut and the washer from that post. I've removed the lug and the nut from this post. I'm now going to check the brushes. I took a look at the springs just to make sure that they had good tension. And I took a look at the brushes just to make sure that they were okay. The only thing I had to do was clean off some of the oil that's on there, but I compared them to some of the new brushes I have today, and they're almost the same length, and I'd rather use those. New brushes have a lacquer on them that can sometimes uh, clog up the uh, face of the commutator. So I would prefer to use the old brushes, and I'm going to keep those on there. In here, I took a look at the, uh, at the face of the commutator, and it may be hard to see. I'm trying to get it in the sunlight. It's in very good shape. What I did there was I used a toothpick to go in and clean out the slots in here. And um, I used a contact cleaner on the face just to make sure that it wasn't too bad. And I think I'm going to leave it that way. But I took a look at the inside of the faceplate just to make sure that there wasn't a buildup of either carbon or oil in the resin. Uh, one of the things I do with the labels, as you can see this contact up here, what I do is I usually add three drops to that. Not more than that because then it gets in on the spindle and what it does is it starts to spin oil onto the brushes and that creates a mess. Also, there's a well on the inside um, down in this area right here. And what I like to do is I like to turn the tender up on end and get as close as I can to the uh, to the bearing which is located down inside about the only way that you can do that is with a needle tip on a you know something like that on the uh, on the LaBelle's oiler here's my truck and I use the desoldering braid in order to get the solder and the old wire away from the contact that's on the pickup and when I put this thing together I'm actually going to use a silver solder. I just think it, it holds better. And uh, whatever you do, please don't use plumbing solder. It's got acid in there and it's good by wire. I try and set this up so that the wheel is relatively secure and the wire won't move. When I make a, uh, a solder joint on something that's like this, that's going to get a lot of wear and tear, I want to make sure that I end up with a pretty uh, shiny solder joint. Uh, if it looks a little gray and dull, then that means it's a cold solder joint, and over time they just have a tendency to come apart. So it's actually pretty shiny. It's, it's not super, super shiny because it's still got some rosin on it. But it's in pretty good shape, and also what I like to do is let it set for about five minutes and let the metal cool down. I, I also needed to make sure that when I put the wire in place, that it swung pretty freely from point A to point B. I don't know if you've ever received a, a tender or if you've ever tried to run a tender where that wire is too short. Um, the next thing you know, it's, it's on its way uh, off into the uh, boondocks. I'm about to put a horseshoe clip in there. I don't like to scratch things up, so I slide a piece of paper underneath the horseshoe clips, and uh, so I'm going to be using these little doodahs. 
and I'm going to squeeze the horseshoe clip into place. With respect to the horseshoe clip, it really has a, a very kind of a flat side and the other side is kind of rounded. What I like to do is I like to put the rounded side facing the frame and uh, then add a little oil to it after I'm done. And let's go in and let's see what our 6020W sounds like. That's with the top off, or top off. Let's put the top back on, make sure that it's in place. And that's good. Let's try it one more time. And that's what we wanted. Well, that's how I work on them, guys. Talk to you later.